Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So we are looking at the Fourier analysis for discrete time aperiodic signals through the DTFT, the discrete time Fourier transform, all right. And we are looking at, a prop, at the properties of the DTFT. So let us continue our discussion on that. So we are looking at the discrete time Fourier transform. And um, the next property, so you looked at several properties, we have looked at the duality. The next property that we want to look at is differentiation in frequency, of course in time it is a discrete signal, so we cannot talk about differentiation in time. So this is differentiation in frequency. What happens when you differentiate in frequency? So, we have x of n, let us say as the DTFT capital X of omega, all right, which means basically your x of omega equals summation n equals minus infinity to infinity. x n e raised to minus g omega n, then if you differentiate this, d x omega over d omega, that is n equals minus infinity to infinity. If you take the differentiation sign inside, x n is a constant, that is d of d o different derivative d over d omega of e raised to minus g omega n with respect to omega. So, or let me just write it that is d over d omega e raised to minus j omega n which is summation n equals minus infinity to infinity x n minus j n e raised to minus j omega n which is minus j summation so, d x omega over d omega that is n equals minus infinity to infinity minus j summation n equals minus infinity to infinity n x n e raised to minus j omega n. So, this is basically if you look at it, this is basically the DTFT of n x n okay, of the signal n x n okay. and therefore, this implies if we bring the j to the other side, this means j d x omega or d omega equals summation n equals minus infinity to infinity n x n e raised to minus j omega n. Okay. And therefore, we can conclude that n x n is basically has the DTFT which is j dx omega over d omega all right. So, next property is the differencing property since we cannot differentiate in time one can difference the differencing in time, which means if x of n has the DTFT x of omega, what can we say about the difference signal x n minus x n minus 1, what can we say about this? This is the difference signal or the differential signal, all right, x n the successive differences sometimes also called as a differential 
signal all right so that's your basically your delta x uh, in time and uh, now if you look at this if you take the fourier transform of this you can see it's very simple this is x of omega minus the fourier transform of xn minus 1 that is e raised to that is the delay in time leads to modulation and frequency e raised to minus j omega x omega equals x tilde omega which implies x tilde omega that is the dtft of xn minus xn minus 1 equals 1 minus e raised to minus j omega into x of omega. So, basically x n minus, so if you look at this you have x n minus x n minus 1 has the discrete time Fourier transform 1 minus e raised to minus j omega into x of omega ok. So, this is basically the discrete time Fourier transform. Let us now look at another property. So, all these are small properties, but fairly useful in the manipulation and analysis of DTFT of signals. A lot of these properties can be used together to derive the final DTFT or to analyze the system or signal under consideration. So, let us consider the accumulation n equals or k equals minus infinity to n that is you are accumulating all the samples of the signal x k until sample n. You can see this is very similar, similar to the integrator which basically integrates the input signal x t all right. In analog time the, uh, the analog all right the corresponding system in analog for an analog signal or for a continuous time signal is an integrator ok. So, basically it integrates or accumulates the signal at a certain time. In the discrete time we are basically accumulating all the signal samples. So, basically if you look at the continuous time analog that is minus infinity to t x t d t. So, this is similar to the integrator. Integrator. Similar to the integrator for continuous time signals all right. And now, the Fourier transform of this is given as pi x of 0, you can show that pi x of 0 into delta omega plus x of omega over 1 minus e power minus g omega. So, that is basically your accumulation that is your integral n equal that is your summation k equals minus infinity to n x k that has the DTFT that is given as pi x 0 delta omega plus x of omega derived divided by 1 over 1 x of omega divided by 1 minus e raised to minus g omega all right. So, that is basically the result uh, that is basically the result for accumulation of a discrete time signal. Okay. Let us now proceed to another important property that is the convolution because we have seen this several times before convolution is always a very important relation uh, uh, a very important property in the analysis of signals and systems because the convolution describes the output of a linear time invariant system to any input either continuous time or discrete time. Okay. So, the next property that we want to look at is basically the convolution and now the convolution of two discrete time aperiodic signals. And convolution is always very important as I have said because it is very closely related to the properties of LTI systems. Okay. So, y n which is the convolution of x 1 n into x 2 n which means this is equal to the summation m equals minus infinity to infinity x 1 m x 2 
n minus m. And now we want to find what is the dtft of y n given of course, the dtfts of x 1 n has a dtft that is x 1 omega and x 2 n has the dtft that is x 2 omega. And now, you can see this dtft y of omega can be obtained as follows. So, y of omega equals summation that is y of n n equals minus infinity to infinity y of n e raise to minus j omega n, which is basically I can always write this as summation n equals minus infinity to infinity substitute the expression for y of n that is m equals minus infinity to infinity x 1 m x 2 n minus m into e raise to minus j omega n. And now, I can always write this as summation n equals minus infinity to infinity summation. Now, I can bring I can interchange the summation with respect to n and m. So, interchanging the summation I am going to describe this by this arrow. So, first you have the summation m equals minus infinity to infinity, then x 1 m will come out because it depends only on m n equals minus infinity to infinity x 2 n minus m e raise to minus g omega n. This is d t f t of x 2 n minus m that is x 2 n delayed by m samples x 2 n delayed by m samples hence the corresponding d t f t is naturally x 2 omega e raise to minus j omega m that is modulation and frequency. Okay. So, that basically gives me summation m equals minus infinity to infinity of uh, x 1 m e raise to minus j omega m into x 2 omega. And now, if you look at x 1 m into e raise to, so I can write this as x 2 omega m equals minus infinity to infinity x 1 m e raise to minus j omega n which is nothing but basically x 1 omega and therefore, what we get is y of omega which is the convolution y n which is the convolution of x n x 1 n x 2 n has the Fourier d t f t that is x 1 omega into x of omega. So, the net result is that x 1 n convolved with x 2 n has the d t f t x 1 omega into x 2 omega. So, convolution in time implies multiplication in frequency similar to what we have seen several times before. Convolution of two discrete time aperiodic signals leads to a multiplication of their discrete time Fourier transform. So, basically I can summarize this as convolution in time um, multiplication in the multiplication in the frequency domain. Okay. So, when you convolve two signals in time, the corresponding DTFTs correct in this case are basically convolved in the frequency domain. Okay. All right. Let us look at similarly 
for multiplication in time again the dual of that is basically it have it has convolution in the similarly let us consider multiplication multiplication in time that is if you look at two signals x 1 n into x 2 n. Now, remember the x 1 omegas are periodic hence this is the periodic convolution okay, 1 over 2 pi x 1 omega periodically convolved with because remember the net d t f t also has to be periodic correct when you convolve to a periodic signal remember the dtft is always a periodic signal so you cannot perform a general convolution but you have to convolve in such a way that the resulting output is periodic and that is given by the periodic convolution okay so this is basically the periodic convolution of x1 the periodic convolution of x1 omega with x2 omega which is basically 1 over 2 pi over 2 pi x 1 theta x 2 omega minus theta d theta I am sorry this is d theta okay. and this is for any contiguous this is for any period 2 pi this is a periodic convolution this is over this is over any period 2 pi. Okay. Now, some other properties if x n is real let us consider a real signal then I can always express a real signal as the sum of even and odd components. Okay, so, this is the even component x c n, the even component x o n, this is the odd component. We have already always we have seen that you can always do this that is x c n, the even component of the signal is x n plus x of minus n by 2 the odd component is x n minus x of minus n by 2 we can always do this for any real signal ok. And now further if I can express the d t f t of x n as a omega plus so in general the d t f t of x n is complex if you can express it as a omega plus j times b omega then it can be shown that and uh, this is something that can be shown that is x n has the d t f t that corresponds to the real part of the d t f t of x n that is the even component has the d t f t a omega that is real part of the d t f t uh, x of omega and similarly as you can expect the odd component has the d t f t that is given by j times b omega. Okay. So, the even component has a d t f t that is a times omega that is the real part and the odd component has it. So, the d t f t of the real part even part of the purely real signal you can see is basically uh, real and the d t f t of the odd part odd component of this real signal is purely imaginary you can see that j times b of omega this is purely imaginary okay this is purely imaginary and now further since we have a real signal recall that for a real signal x of conjugate of minus omega equals x of omega for a real signal x n where x omega is the d t f t of this is true for any uh, 
remember this is true for any real signal x n. So, this implies that if I take the d t f t a of omega plus j b of omega, this is x of omega, this must be equal to x of minus omega conjugate. So, a minus omega j b minus omega conjugate. Okay. So, this must be equal to a of minus omega plus j b minus omega conjugate and this implies that a of omega plus j b minus omega equals well a of minus omega minus j b of minus omega. Now, equating the real and imaginary parts, equating real comma imaginary parts, we have a of omega equals a of minus omega, okay, which implies a of omega is a even function. And further, we also have b of omega equals, you can see equating the imaginary parts, we have b of omega equals minus, I am sorry, this has to be b of minus omega. So, this is basically b of minus omega. Okay. So, b of omega equals minus b of minus omega, which means this is an this is an odd function. So, a of omega for a real signal, the real part is an even function of omega, real part of the DTFT and the uh, imaginary part b of omega is an odd function of omega. Okay. Now, therefore, if x n is real and even, now what does this imply? This implies two things, one x n equals real plus even, this implies x n equals x c of n comma x o of n, the odd component of n is 0. So, this implies x of omega equals a of omega, which is basically real and even. So, for a real and even signal, the corresponding d t f t is. So, if the signal is real plus even, Okay. The corresponding d t f t is real plus also even. On the other hand, if the signal is real and odd, okay, now look at the other thing. If x n now this implies that x n equals the odd component, okay, the even component is 0. If x n is an or odd signal and uh, x c of n equals 0 and this implies x of omega equals x odd component of omega which is equal to j b of omega which is purely imaginary and odd. Remember b of omega is odd and this is a purely imaginary function. So, this is this is purely imaginary plus odd. So, if the signal is a real even signal, its DTFT is pure is purely real and even. If x n is a real and odd signal, then its DTFT is purely imaginary and odd. Okay. So, this is the important thing to keep in mind. Okay. All right. So, that basically sums up the properties of the DTFT of uh, real signals, real and even, real and odd signals. Okay. All right. 
and uh, then what we can also do so as, so as to sort of to complete this we can look at the Parseval's relation that is the last topic one of the last properties that we can look at for the DTFT that is the Parseval's relation and this is also very simple remember previously we have said let us say we have y n equals x 1 n that is the multiplication of x 1 n and x 2 n then we know that y of omega is the periodic convolution of x 1 omega uh, and x 2 omega. So, that is given as integral 1 over, 1 over 2 pi uh, integral over any 2 pi region x 1 of theta x 2 of omega minus theta d theta, which implies basically that now if I look at summation. So, now we have basically what do we have? We have uh, basically summation n equals minus infinity to infinity y n e power minus j omega n this is equal to y of omega. Now, if you set omega equal to 0, now in this set omega equal to 0, what this implies is summation n equals minus infinity to infinity y n equals y of 0 implies summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity the product x 1 n into minus infinity to infinity x 1 n into x 2 of n equals y of 0 and y of 0 is nothing but set omega equal to 0 on the right. So, that is integral x 1 of theta x 2 of minus theta d theta and you can also in fact write that as theta is just an index. So, in fact, you can also write that as 1 over 2 pi integral over 2 pi x 1 of omega x 2 of minus omega d omega. Okay. This is summation x 1 of n x 2 of n. Okay. So, you can always write this thing. Okay, summation n equal to minus 1. This is nothing but the correlation between these two discrete time sequences x 1 n x 2 n. Summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity x 1 n x 2 n that is integral 1 over 2 pi integral over any 2 pi x 1 omega into x 2 minus omega d omega. Okay, I have simply replaced the integration variable theta by omega. Okay. Now, if we set x 2 n now in this, so this you can think of this as the generalized Parseval's relation. In fact, this is a step ahead of the Parseval's relation, it is much more general. It talks about two different signals x 1 n and x 2 n. So, you can think of this as a generalized or a general form So, you can think of this as a general form of Parseval's relation. Now, if you set x 2 n equals x 1 conjugate n, then what you have is x 2 of omega equals x 1 conjugate of minus omega, because conjugate sequence is x 1 conjugate of minus omega which means x 2 of minus omega equals x 1 conjugate of omega. So, if you substitute, if you substitute x 2 n equals x 1 conjugate on n on the left hand side, what we have is summation x 1 n into x 1 conjugate n that is magnitude x 1 n whole square 
that is equal to summation 1 over 2 pi integral over 2 pi x 1 omega into x 2 of minus omega which is x 1 conjugate of omega that is x 1 omega into x 1 conjugate omega of omega which is magnitude x 1 square into d omega that is the sum of the energy over one period. In fact, this is not the energy, but you can think of this as the power because you are dividing by 2 pi. So, this is the power of the you can think of this as the power of the DTFT. Okay. So, this is the Parseval's relation for the this is the Parseval's theorem for DTFTs. DTFT, the summation n equal to minus infinity to infinity magnitude x 1 n square equals 1 over 2 pi integral over any 2 pi region magnitude x 1 of omega whole square d omega. Okay? All right. So, basically that completes our discussion of the properties of the DTFT. In the subsequent, in the next module, we will start looking at uh, the DTFT and its properties with relation to the, with relation to LTI system. All right, so we'll stop here and continue in the subsequent modules. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.